All right, so welcome to another video from the chart reader. So this is Stock Talks number 16. We are doing the third review of the marijuana sector. So um, one, two, three, about seven stocks we're going to review. And as always, we'll start with the big boy. We're going to look at Tilray on the daily. We'll start up here with our moving averages, our um, resistance lines, and then our um, lower indicators. So, hey, if you haven't already, give it a little subscribe. It's the fastest way to get all the updated videos. So, we made the last video on the 6th, which was, I believe, this day right here. So, actually, it was the weekend. So, it was before the 8th, and then you can see the 5th was the Friday, right? So what happened? Clearly, we made a very big run to this last line that we drew, the very top line, right? Um, almost to the penny, actually. What did it go to? Um, it got as high as 443. My line was at 442. So look at that. Clearly, the next day, it just, for whatever reason, shot down, right? Actually closed below the 8. The next day it went up, the day below it went down, and so on and so forth, right? There was basically this like little dance between the eight. It does look like for whatever reason, today was a nice little break back up. Um, again, what's really happening? I, I think we're still just kind of fighting for the eight. I am really glad to see that we haven't gone too low, right? This, I mean, in some ways this was pretty low. It's not like we came back and tested the, the 20 again, but yeah, ideally we would like to see a little bit more of a comfortable ride of the eight versus this, you know, still struggle right here. Um, I will say this, right? We're obviously coming to the last one. So, hey, if it can break 442, the next place it would go is this 100, which is at 459, right? We can call it 460. I'll draw a couple new lines up here. But overall, I mean, this has done well since the 6. And clearly, the lines um, were good lines if you were using these, right? So, um, again, obviously, this is not financial advice. This is just merely showing you the power of technical analysis, right? So, and then I've said this a couple times. I actually move my money using what I call the one. We're looking at chart readers here. And believe me, this little stack that we got here with my like hand drawn lines, these moving averages that I hope you've started a copy. And then this basic MACD and RSI, it is better than most people use. You know what I mean? So, um, again, hopefully we make a run to the 100 and then eventually work our way. Because, again, look at that. That's a nice little gap to the 200, right? So, um, yeah, not too bad with Tilray. Again, did pretty well since this original or the last video on the 6th. ACB, so we're going to come to Aurora. Look at this. So Aurora is in the process of hopefully filling this gap. And it looks like, you know, RSI is a little high, but I love this little takeoff. Ooh, excuse me, a little hiccup there. Um, again, we made this video on the 6th, right? So basically the first trading day, it came right to this 165 line, then came down to the 8, right back to the line. Better than the last day, right? It didn't come all the way down to the 8, and then boom, a break, and what now looks like a run. So there's a really good shot that this actually might go to this 228 here. Um, ACB, not too bad. Again, I love gap fills, right? There's nothing better than a bunch of reds in a row. Obviously, it's bad if you are holding it right here, right? Because you just lost a lot of money. But there's nothing better than filling the gap on the way up. Believe me when I say that. So um, there is a pretty sexy gap fill happening here. Again, RSI is a little high, but oh man, I love this just mile of red. So um, I definitely want to see it open up here, right? Let, let's get a 189, literally a penny higher is fine with me. But go in the positive ACB and um, you should be doing pretty well. Um, I like it, very nice. And then how high up is, I actually have no other lines. Let's make a couple more lines just in case this thing does a crazy fill. And then again, if it fails, we still have our lines down here, right? But um, the signs are looking pretty good, actually. I'm going to put one, I think, right here. I can still do it right there. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think that's that's more than plenty. Again, I love this right here. I even talked about it, actually, on the video, right? I think roughly 50% of this thing, so I don't even know if that, yeah, I think it's about right here, right? Oh, look at that. But roughly 50% of this big chunk might be a stopper, but I love it. Maybe this little guy right here might be a stopper, but again, um, nothing better than a good gap fill right here. So... ACB, gap fill, I love it. M-S-O-S. So this is an ETF. This is MSOS. This is a combination 
of multiple multi-state operators. So a couple different companies that have a different locations or different operations in multiple states. So that's what MSOS is, multiple state operator. I don't know what that last S is, but whatever. Um, again, it actually looks like we're just pretty much staying in this channel right here, this entire week. So MSOS actually looks like it's the weakest of the three that we've seen. Um, but again, the lines tell the story, right? We're, we're basically just sitting in this channel and really an ETF isn't gonna go as, as fast or as high as an individual stock, right? Because an ETF is a blend of multiple stocks and in a lot of ways, as one does really well, one might do really bad and they just kind of balance each other out, right? But I'll tell you, I'm liking the setup here. It looks like the green might be wanting to take off. Red looks like it wants to be going down and that's a pretty low RSI actually. So um, we're in the positive with the MACD, obviously right at zero, give or take. But um, yeah, a break of 1220 would be what I'd love to see because we're actually above all the moving averages right now. Maybe below the 20. Yeah, it looks like we're below the 20. But um, yeah, let's break this 1220 channel and then um, maybe we can see some movement on MSOS. But don't get discouraged again if this is going a little slower. In a lot of ways, the ETF is supposed to go slower. It is a slow and steady monster. And trust me, there's nothing better with your money than slow and steady in a lot of ways, right? You can go away and have a good day. So um, man, Hexo, look at this. Hexo definitely made a pretty big move. So again, we made the video before the 8th, right? We made the video on the 6th. On the 8th, it just took the 50. Again, same basic drop that all the others had, but it only had one drop. The rest kind of had that two or three day drop, right? But between, not consecutively, but between that like five day window. But yeah, Hexa did really well. And again, it looks like it's, it's working its way up, so. Um, a very nice, look. if you look at the RSI, there's a pretty good gap going right there, right? So this continues to slope up while this stays pretty flat. RSI is a little high, but again, when you have some momentum, momentum can go um, and help with some ways. So I can see Hexo trying to make a move back to 30 cents. So um, we have the line right here at 0.28, right? So, um, and it looks like it's just a little high. I don't know if that would actually hit 27 if I go low. I don't think so. I think 28 is, is pretty good. Um, and I actually think you might even go to like a third decimal when you're this low, but Hexo made a very nice play during the, the last couple of days. So really this entire industry so far has done pretty well. If I'm not mistaken, CGC had a monster day today. Yeah, 14%. I remember seeing this and look at that. So CGC actually breaks all the previous lines and I've said it a few times. When you break my lines, really good things happen and, and you can see it here actually. CGC breaks the very last line we made and then just runs, right? I love it. So um, yeah, again, RSI, it's actually in the lower 70s too. So there, I, there's a pretty good shot that this can continue running tomorrow. Um, take a look at how this opens. If it opens positive, that'd be good, but again, um, this literally breaks the last line and then gets a monster from it. So, um, not too shabby at all. Let's make a couple new lines. Did it break this line? Is it sitting there? Yeah, it did not break this line. Looks like that's what ultimately stopped it today. Um, we'll put that right there and then we'll put that right there. Cool. Okay. So again, man, CGC was probably the nicest and again this 14 day monster when you break all my lines um i hope again i hope it gives you the confidence that the lines are good right so um smdl i remember i like sandal setup i don't think it did it immediately but hey it looks like it actually hasn't had a nice run the last couple days and man look at that rsi oh i love it so again this is the riding of the eight we want to see right I remember being a little extra bullish on Sandal. I honestly didn't ride it if you want to know the truth, but this is pretty much riding this gap fill right here, right? So we pretty much went from right here all the way to as high as the gap it went itself, right? With the wick. So there was an entire gap fill in this last uh, trading week. Um, Sandal, damn, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little sad I missed out on that. I should have actually. I remember being a little bullish on Sandal too. Um, but look at that, beautiful. Again, this is what a really good RSI should look like. So 
Um, there could still be some movement here. Again, it is a little high, right? Um, it might get a little bounce down off this 52. This is actually the first time we've been over the 50 in quite a while. So um, another big um, another big milestone as well. Actually, let's see what the weekly looks like on Sandal. Um, sandal, okay. First time actually, look at that. It's been a nice little climb on Sandal. And it's actually over the 8 so far. It's still early in the week, obviously, but... Um, sandal, not too bad. I regret not doing anything. I'm, I am actually. Um, and then last on the list is Cron. Um, really, there's only. It looks like there's only one line that was drawn here. Okay, again, it was. It was all up there. So, what happened here? I drew this line right here, right on. Um, damn, I can't believe I didn't draw any lines below because this one clearly failed, right? Um, it, you can almost say it failed the 200 and then obviously it did fail to do a confirmation. So I've said this a couple times. If you can go over the line, you also want some confirmation, right? So like, let's go back to, to CGC because I did compliment the line. So like, let's just talk about it real quick. With CGC, this was the last line we had and there was one, two, three, four tests of it before it went, right? With what we just looked at, C-R-O-N. There was one, but nothing else after that. There was no confirmation. There wasn't even anything that like, maybe you closed right here, right? Like relatively within it. We just literally gapped down hard, right? Why did it gap down hard? Honestly, I have no idea, right? I didn't, I wasn't following the news or any, anything like that, but um, Kron clearly failed to break the first line and bad things happen, right? It was almost the exact opposite. When you break the last line, you should go up. If you can't even get over this line, it goes down, right? But immediately, it seems like it wants to pick up, right? It's been two pretty monster days. We're now over all these moving averages and actually the RSI looks good. So I could see this maybe trying to make another run to, to three, five, four. So um, let me draw some lines down here. There, um, I'll put that there, and then I will put that there. I think that's good, and then obviously we can kind of, I mean, I don't want to say obvious, let me make some lines for the people, why not? One right there, and then I will use, I think that, no, I wanted to use that, because yeah, I look like it hit that and that, so cool, I like this. Um, okay. Cool. That has been the marijuana sector. Overall, they did really well. I regret not getting in on Sandal because I do remember being bullish on it when we did the, the second review. Um, but a lot of these have some potential to keep running. I know there's been some good gains in the last week, but just watch these. There, there could be some uh, continual push. So again, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And remember, this is not financial advice. This is simply you seeing the power of moving averages, the power of these um, support and resistance lines, learning some of these indicators, you know what I mean? And just in, in general, uh, technical analysis. So, hey, I hope you're learning. Have a good one.